Do you ever wonder what would happen if, well, if... If you give a dad a podcast. I'm what you call a nerdy fan. I nerd out at this stuff. Hardcore. You'll hear me talk about anime on here. You'll hear me talk about Power Rangers. You'll hear me talk about wrestling on here. Okay. I had an axe handle with a twisted T on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was right after that Twisted T video went viral. And man, they went out and grabbed it and smacked a dude in the head with it. It was so... That's great. That's- I'd like to thank this podcast as a nostalgia moment for me. It's a show where I can talk about whatever I want. I- I'm, a, I'm a human and a chiropractor. There was a picture of me. It looked like I was on the side of a ramen box over in China. But- <laughs> so I took my kids with me to Comic-Con. I thought that was really cool. Well, I don't know if my wife should listen to this podcast. We'll cut that part out. <laughs> you know, you hope. Like, and then Robert said this. <laughs> if you give a dad a podcast, available now on all podcasting platforms. Did you ever wonder what could have been with the AWA had things gone differently? Had their fortunes gone differently? Had certain wrestlers not left and perhaps more money would have been at the disposal of the Ganyas? Well, wonder no further. You can go to Brad Drake's YouTube channel and experience the 1987 Supermod for yourself. As Brad Drake starts off in May 1987, along with Greg Ganya, Baron Von Rotschke, Vern Ganya himself, Nick Bockwinkel, Larry Zabisco, Kurt Hennig, and a slew of others as he plays and saves the AWA. Hello everyone, this is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to tell you about a new podcast out called Fouls Count Anywhere. It is a classic pro wrestling podcast that brings you the legends of wrestling with true wrestling fans Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. They bring on guests that are legends in this business as well as wrestlers of today, promoters, referees, you name it, they have them on there, folks. And I encourage you to listen to them. If you're on YouTube, watch them. They put, drop every Saturday. They have their podcast. And they drop it in the afternoon. So look forward to that podcast coming out. Falls Count Anywhere podcast with Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. Folks, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. And enjoy the podcast. Hey everyone, this is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. We are on today because of you. And in order to continue the podcast and get the guests on here that require some financial compensation, we're going to need help from people like you. Right now, we're attempting to get our YouTube videos monetized through YouTube. We need 1,000 subscribers in order to do that. So I have decided that if the 1,000th subscriber We'll get a free t-shirt like this from me and come on the show as a guest on the podcast. So subscribe today and that 1,000 subscriber will be contacted by me and be given a t-shirt and come on the show. So subscribe today. If you already have, thank you. If you haven't, please do and tell your friends and subscribe today and we'll talk to you soon and enjoy the podcast. Thank you for joining another edition of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I'm Brian Ferguson. My guest today has been a fan of wrestling for many years, has been to many conventions, uh, WrestleCons, you name it. I want to welcome in Mr. Reggie Hart. Reggie, my friend, thank you, you for coming on today. Uh, thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Like I said, uh, I heard about you a few months back. I was at Cauliflower Alley Club. I talked to Maddie Montcalm, and he said, you got to get this guy on here. And so I reached out, and I'm glad you accepted. And, folks, if you're watching, you can see what behind him. There are all those belts and, and, and photos. So it's uh, quite a guy there. So I'm excited to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All Thank right. You. Let's talk a little bit, if we can, Um how you were raised, where were you raised uh, growing up, uh, kind of how you got into all this, if you if you wouldn't mind talking about that a little bit. 
Uh, no problem. Um, I'm, I was born in a little small town in South Carolina, a little small town. It actually called Saluda, right? Mm -hmm. And this is um, long before we had cable. I, I grew up doing, um, you know, I was born in 1972, so I, I just turned 50 this year. So I grew up when, and, and t this may sound funny, we only had like three stations yeah. over, over the air. We had like an antenna and had moved to rabbit ears and all that stuff, right? <laughs> but we grew up, the area I grew up in was closer to, I was, we were only an hour away from Columbia, but we were an hour away from Augusta. So uh, the local wrestling that we used to get was Georgia Championship Wrestling over the air. But um, again, we didn't have cable, so I didn't get the 605. We just used to get local wrestling yeah. on, on, it wasn't even Saturday morning, Saturday afternoons on WJBF, Channel Channel 12 and Channel 6 out of Augusta, right? Yeah. And Gordon Soley, you know, and yeah. all the stars of Georgia Championship Wrestling. Yeah. And um, that's where I first started wrestling, and I was young. My dad was a big wrestling fan, and he would go to uh, a place in Augusta. He used to be Bell Auditorium. I think they've changed the name now, but it mm -hmm. was a, a Bell Auditorium, and they would have wrestling every Monday night, and that's what he oh, would wow. attend. But he would take my brother, but I wasn't old enough to attend, right? <laughs> but uh, on Saturday afternoons, I would, I would watch it. And and like I said, we would do that for, you know, every Saturday. And then I think the year was maybe 19... 81 mm -hmm. we got this thing called cable right <laughs> yeah. and i didn't realize that the local wrestling i watched every saturday on saturday night they had this weird thing called um georgia championship wrestling at 605 <laughs> and i was like whoa two hours <laughs> two hours of this stuff and i was like oh my god and the thing is i didn't realize how much i was missing because you know um the local programming wouldn't always show you everything from the 605 Georgia show, right? Yeah. So I was so amazed that, you know, the more content, and then on the 605 show, they were bringing other people from other territories. Yeah. That I was like, that I would only see in the magazines. Yeah. So that yeah. was really, you know, that was really amazing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And But um, after we got cable, that's when I got introduced into my, my other favorite, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, and that's when I go back and forth between Georgia and Mid Atlantic. That's why I say, you know, you. I know you say you're an AWA guy, yeah. and I see you with the, the the new NWA. But I'm I'm straight old school Mid Atlantic NWA Georgia, the yeah. whole territory. That's who I am. And you can't see my shirt, um, but um, even I, my moniker when I go places, I take pictures. I call myself Mister Six Hundred Five. I love it. I love that, it. That, in the belt community, that's they call me Mr. 605. And I was gonna put it down by my name, but I didn't want I was like, he's not ready for that yet. So oh, I was like, that would have been fine. That would have been great, actually. But but that's my that's my gimmick. When I go places, they like that's hey, Mr. 605. Hey, because what happened is, is um this guy named Brian Lassie had started a podcast called the 605 Super Podcast. Yeah. And I, I started listening to that and I bought some t-shirts and I thought wearing 605 Super Podcast. And I start becoming the 605 guy, right? And after a while, I was like, hey, hey, this Mr. 605 is sticking. So, like I said, I, I was like, I don't know if you can see it. Look, there I it like is, Mr. Yeah, Six, Mr. 605. Mr. 605. That's it, yeah. And, hey, that's and, awesome. and that's that. Hey, look, that started to be my gimmick. And that, look, and that's what I'm sticking with. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody, yeah. everybody has to have something. Yeah. But um, that's pretty much how. I, I got started, right? Mm -hmm. And um if, if you I can continue if you want me to, I can please, just keep going. Please, okay. please, yeah. So um grew up, like I said, grew up in a little small town watching um wrestling into into the 80s. And you know, the 80s wrestling to me, that was you know, I know we lived through the 90s with the whole nitro raw thing, but the 80s were were to me it was the like the biggest time in wrestling because mm -hmm. um I would wake up on a Saturday morning in the mid eighties. I would wake up the Georgia championship wrestling in the morning, mid Atlantic, and then start getting mid South UWF, yeah. even, even glow gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Yeah. It, it rest, wrestling was on all day long. And yeah. I thought that was, you know, my whole Saturday afternoon was planned out. And then at night, six Oh five, it came on. It's like that thing. It was great. Right. Yeah. And, and then, 
and you know, wrestling transition and, and when NWA kind of phased out and went to WCW, I still watched it, but it kind of it kind of lost a little bit of its thing because it went from being the old school wrestling to they're trying to be like what Vince was doing up in New York. Yeah. And I watched it, but it, you know, it just it just wasn't the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. um you you talk about um earlier we talked about one of my most memorable things, but I, I will tell you uh, the first match that I went to, it was in a little small town called Newberry, South Carolina, in the uh, Newberry High School. And the main event was Jack and Jerry Briscoe. They were the NWA World, Mid-Atlantic World Tag Team Champions. Yeah. And they were wrestling the uncrowned World Tag Team Champions. It was a great team. One of my top five teams, nobody talks about. Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. Young Blood. Yeah. Nobody talks about that tag team, but I grew yeah. up one of the greatest tag teams yeah. of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. In my opinion, great that they, they don't get enough credit. No. But you talk about that, that was one of my, that was actually the first wrestling match I saw was Ricky Steamboat, yeah. Jay Youngblood versus the Briscoes. You know, at that time, the Briscoes, they were tag team champions. They were the evil heels. Yeah. And, you know, I, I didn't know Jack Briscoe as being this world. I, they talked about him, but I didn't know him as being this, this world champion from the 70s. Right. By the time right. I started watching wrestling, all I knew was Harley Race. Right. And then transitioned to Ric Flair. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, um, wow. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a few years older than you. I'll be 52 here in a week. Uh -huh. um, happy, happy early birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, but same thing, you know, we had, we didn't have cable. Right. And all we got was AWA. That's why I'm an AWA guy. Right, right. All we had, because I'm from Wisconsin originally. Uh, right. So we were only a couple hours from the cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And same thing, you know, I, as soon as cable hit, I was just like you. Saturday morning into Saturday evening wrestling all day now i will tell you you were fortunate your parents liked wrestling my right. parents hated it and, and, so, and you, you, you you but you said your grandma right my grandma see yes <laughs> yeah my grandma would let me watch it at her house yeah. so that was the great the great part of it you know so and that's you know and i still watch you know some of it today and we'll get into that a little later but you know it was an integral part of growing up for me as well and People, I remember when I was a teenager, and I'm probably the same for you. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Right. Uh, but when you're watching wrestling, they're like, what are you watching that stuff? Well, that stuff's fake, and it ain't, it ain't, you know, it's all. And I get so mad. I'm like, you know what? I, you go in there for a couple minutes, and you see what if it's fake. But, but Brian, tell me something. Back, and, and you know, we, we're only a couple years apart. Say, yeah. during the mid-80s, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, and I'm just telling you. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't a smart fan. I wasn't a smart fan. No, I wasn't either. Until, um, I went to the University of South Carolina in 1990 and, um, it's this columnist by the name of Mike Mooneyham. Yeah. He had the, he had the Post and Courier, Charleston Post and Courier, and he would actually have an article every Sunday, right? Mm. And I would read it and it's almost like, um, dog, <laughs> all the wrestlers' real names. And he's, he's, he's telling you what's going to happen, like, from the house, I was like, oh my goodness. He's telling me about a title change that hadn't happened yet. Uh, and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, whoa, what what is this? You know? Yeah. So, but like, growing up, I, I was totally when I said K Fabe, I yep. was totally K Fabe, man. Oh, really. I was too. And, and you know, I believe when the heels beat up the baby faces that they really couldn't stand them, vice exactly. versa. And you know, when people would say, Oh, it's fake, and I, I didn't believe it. I was like, you know. Have you watched this? I mean, these guys are beating the crap out of each other. And this exactly. thing, you know, I mean, back then they drew blood. They did all the, I mean, it was pretty realistic, but. Very realistic. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, it is what it is. I still, I, I got a lot of DVDs I watched from back in the day. And, and uh, so you got into pro wrestling pretty young. So as yep. you got older. You know, you said you went to the University of South Carolina. Go went Gamecocks, to the University right? of South Carolina. I saw oh, your video oh, the other day from the, the game. Right, right, Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Was, I, so what you, you, what you did say, you study, and, and then what do you, what do you, what did you get into? Uh, um, I ended up with a, and I say ended up, I, was my, I started out a computer science major, but I ended up with a biology degree. Okay. And right now, um, I work at a nuclear plant. When I tell them I'm like a nuclear chemist right now. Okay. And um, wow. look, as they say, um, 
um, nuclear chemist by day, wrestling fan at night, you know, well, old school wrestling fan at night. Yeah, that's right. But uh, that that's what I end up doing. And like I said, um, even when I was at Carolina, uh, what my dorm was, uh, the Carolina Coliseum was like in walking distance, right? And this is... Um, this is still during, you know, the 90s is during the, the WCW era. And I don't know if you were well, around here, uh, you know, the WWF was taking over, right? But they haven't made it to the South. Um, this was still, you know, old school wrestling, you know, yeah. the WWF didn't come down here. So um, Clash of the Champions and house shows would actually come to the Coliseum and come to a building um, in Columbia. It's called a Township Auditorium. Okay. That's where on the territory circuit, um, once a month, wrestling or sometimes weekly, wrestling would come to the township, right? But when they had the big events, the WCW or the big stuff, uh, it would go to the Coliseum. And um, I remember going um, going down there one time um, while I was actually in school. And I was like, whoa, Clash of Champions. This is stuff that I actually, yeah. you know, watch on television. Yeah. And I actually went to an event and yeah. then I actually go to house shows um, at the township. And back then, um, I would get ringside seats for like $8. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. you, 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 you know, you can't even get in any building. You can't even get in the parking lot for $8 now. No. You know, parking costs you more than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I remember going to the township uh, in 1993, and I still got pictures. It was Ric Flair versus Paul Orndorff. And I told you I'm a belt guy. And Ric Flair was wearing a big gold belt. Paul Orndorff at the time, he was the world television title, right? Okay. And um, I, and even back then, I was I was in the belt. I, I love wrestling belts. And um, even even a childhood, I would, um, and I don't know if you did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I would take aluminum foil. I would take it. My parents were throwing out an old couch. I would cut the leather up. Off the back of it, I was making wrestling belts when I was like eight years old or ten years old. So you know, and um, and and the thing is, they would look pretty good too. Yeah. And, and we would always wrestle in the backyard. I would end up losing losing my belt, and I would have to make another one because I was one of the small guys in the neighborhood. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we talked about old school wrestling, but I, um, I had a love for wrestling belts at an early age, also. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a quick story. When I was in high school, I was in a, a drama class. I mean, that was part of your curriculum you had to do back then, right? And we put on a wrestling event in our auditorium. We made the belts uh, out of, like you said, we used cardboard and we just right, wrapped right. it with tin foil, right? But we dressed up. Uh, we had. Ultimate Warrior, Ric Flair, wow. Road Warriors, Honor the Giant, Ted DiBiase, all these guys. This was probably 87, 88. Right, right. I was in high school. And I still have that VHS tape because we recorded it on uh, video. And uh, it's funny because you say that. And I think people got a kick out of it. But to me, it was something that had never really been done in our school. And there, I think people at first thought we were crazy. Right, right. But it worked, you know, and, right. and we and we and we did well with it. So I just think that was uh, pretty interesting when you talk about the belt. So yeah, so after you got out of college and yep. you know started working and stuff, were you still able to uh, go to shows as much or things like uh, that, or how did that how did that go? Yeah, um, um, I uh, I got I finished college uh, roughly around ninety five. And I got married in 96. Mm -hmm. And um, along with myself, my nephew was a big wrestling fan. And he's only like a couple years younger than me. So we would start, this was, and I think about this is the mid 90s, right? So mm -hmm. think about Nitro started around 95. Yep. So um, 96, 95, 96, that started the, the Monday Night Wars, right? Yep. So at that time, Nitro um, was touring around, right? And again, they were coming to the, the, the Carolina Coliseum, mm -hmm. and we were actually camp out for tickets for okay. Nitro. If you go back to some of the old 96 tape, if you got some tapes, you'll see me, like, if the rest is coming down, I'm, like, right there by the ring post, giving them high fives yeah. as they're coming through and stuff like that. We would camp out, and then we got smart. I didn't realize. We used to have, 
record stores around here. And it was a place called Sounds Familiar. It was a record store, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that you could actually go to the record stores and buy wrestling tickets, oh, right? Okay, yeah. So so instead of camping out with all these people at the, at the Coliseum, right? We would go to the record store early that morning, go right in and buy the same tickets that everybody else is buying because it's <laughs> it's by, you know what, um, Ticketron or who, who's ever selling them, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing. So I'm like, no, I could have been doing this like two years ago, <laughs> you know, but, but, but we would go, we, every time Nitro was in town from like 95 up until maybe 98 or 99 or 2000, whenever they stopped doing it. Right. Right. Um, we, we would do all the Nitros and the WWF um, still would do big, they would do house shows here mm -hmm. and we would go to the house shows, but they, um, they, they were never like, um, they didn't bring a raw here till later on. I think yeah. it was maybe after they purchased um, WCW. I think, mm -hmm. and um, I think that was the first time I went to a raw. I think I went to one raw, and maybe I went to a SmackDown later on. But that was like after you know, sometime yeah. maybe close to the mid two thousands or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. But yeah, even and now think about it. I'm already married at this time, right? Yeah. And I and I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I remember me and my nephew. Um, we were out, we were making posters, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so funny, you talk about, my wife was sitting down helping us draw because she had a straighter hand, right? So all three, we got three grown adults in, uh, you know, 25, 26 years old, sitting on the floor making wrestling posters. So, you know, cause we're trying to make the best poster because yeah. when you go to those TV events, they would um they would look for the best posters and you automatically we try to get on television. That's what Hell we were yeah. trying to do. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were trying to do. But it was funny <laughs> you talking about being sport. You know, that's one thing about it. No yeah. matter what I do, and you see the belts around me and all my conventions, yeah. my wife is very supportive. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't say you're crazy or anything like oh, that. She just let yeah. lets me do me and yeah, and, and we carry on, you know. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, how does your wife feel about it? Because uh mine's supportive of it, but she doesn't you know, she won't, she tolerates it. I'll put it to you like that. Yeah. She'll, she, she'll go to some of the events with me and stuff, uh, but uh, she's not into it. She doesn't like, you know, hey, let's go do this and stuff, but uh, she's supportive of it. Like, uh, not as supportive as yours, but hey, I'll, well, I'll take well, it. She's uh -oh. a good lady I said, regardless. I said she's supportive, but she doesn't go with me. She, <laughs> um, she, yeah. went, to, she went to one wrestling show with me, but that was like a, a family affair where um yeah. you you know um you ever heard of George South? George South. Yeah, George South. Yeah. He, he, he puts he has like a Christian ministry where okay. he puts on wrestling shows and it was in a place called Charleston, South Carolina, about like an hour and a half from me. Okay. And we drove down there and um, you know, it was more like a family thing. It was outside. Yeah. And um and they really everybody had a good time. But that's, mm -hmm. I think that's the only event she's ever attended. But like I said, the the whole family went with me then. So yeah. that was the only time other than that, um the conventions and stuff I go to. Yeah, she, she's never she she's never ten, but uh, sometimes I like it better. You know, when I do my thing, I um, it's it's sometimes better when you know. Yeah, you're by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I on, get you. You're, 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 you're on your own time schedule and everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. She she went to WrestleCon with me in Dallas back in uh, March. Right. Uh, but you know, she just went because one of our boys was lives around there too. So. Uh, she went because of that, but uh, you know she she she's a good woman. I mean, there's right, right, questions right. about that, but she just yeah, she's not into it like me, and and so I do my thing and, and like that, and she has some hobbies that I don't care for, and, and I, I'll, you, I, I do it, you. but you know, yeah. So you know, you said you've been to a bunch, a lot of house shows and, and yeah. uh, things of that nature. So what's uh, probably one of your favorite? wrestling shows that you've been to um besides well, the one when I, you were a little kid <laughs> well um well I'm, I'm still i'm gonna go back to um i think i was i was 12 years old okay 12 years old and i i went it was a uh it was my birth it was june 19th it was my birthday right okay. and i believe the year was 1986 right and my brother had bought tickets and we went to the township and the main event, right, were the the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson versus Tully Blanchett and Arn Anderson. Oh right? yeah. And so, so, and again, I told you I'm a belt guy, right? Yeah. So 
the Rock and Roll Express were the world tag team champions, right? Came in and um, I, I got I got I got a, a set of tags back there, the belts that they wore in. Arn Anderson was the world television champion. Tully Blanchard was the national heavyweight champion, right? Yeah. And and when they walked in, the way the lights was hitting those belts and it was sparkling. I when I say I was in awe. Because I was like, oh, my goodness, those belts. Again, I'm going back to the belts. You see that? Yeah, right? yeah, the belt guy, yeah. Yeah, those belts were so beautiful, man. It's like, oh, my. And 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 and, and, and I don't remember too much about the match because it was so long ago. <laughs> yeah, right. I yeah. don't remember a whole lot. But all I know, you know, Ricky Martin, it was back during the time where, um, do you know, um, I don't know if you used to keep up with Mid-Atlantic, yeah. It broke Ricky Martin's nose, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember so, that. So yeah. he had to wear um that little tape mask, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I remember, I remember, you know, of course, part of they were they were able to they were able to take the thing off and they threw it out the ring. Of course, they're beating up Ricky Morton, and you know, he's the best seller in the business. You oh, know yeah, yeah, yeah. The best seller in the business. And the thing is, and, and like I said, to this day, I can't even tell you, I'll have to look back. I don't even know who won the match. But all I know is when 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 that looked, I was twelve years old at the time. I think, oh no, fourteen. I was like, I was. I, you couldn't tell me that, that I was like the happiest kid in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. telling on. Yeah, that would be. I got to meet all those guys at at uh, WrestleCon, and uh, right. You know, it's funny that now you look back and they're like good buddies now and stuff. But it, it, you know. I, you're just looking like I can't believe because they used to sell it so good. They did and back in they the day. Did. I mean, I don't. You know, today it's kind of a missing component to me. I mean, they sell it a little bit, but I think with social media and stuff now, you know, one minute they're they hate each other, but then they're on social media. Oh, great match with so and so tonight. Uh, blah blah yeah. blah. And it's I, just, but I think Grant, that's the way. That's the way you have to look at it because you know the whole the whole. Um, innocence of is gone, kayfabe is gone, so we know it's not real. So, yeah. um, and, and you, you know, you have your NWA shirt on. That's the reason I started watching the NWA a few yeah. years back because it reminded me so much mm -hmm. of what I grew up with. And mm -hmm. even before Nick Aldis won the belt, when they had yeah. Tim Storm yeah. with the title, yeah. and then, um, and then, um, you know, the whole thing where he's trying to regain the belt. When he lost to Nick Aldis and the NWA, they put like this ten pound series. Yeah, with, like, yeah. Cody. All that. It's like it's like oh my goodness, who's ever doing this stuff is great. Yeah. It's, and because you know I'm all about the storyline. Yeah. And the st the storyline yeah. was great, and yeah. that's what I love about the NWA. And y'all guys talked about it on on the podcast. I think I think yeah. you did. Yeah. Um, they they went back to the studio wrestling, mm -hmm. and um, going back to the podium. It's like oh my goodness. Yeah. It, it worked then it still works it does. If you know how to do it yep it i wore this works. shirt because of you i'm just telling you i knew you were a, a georgia mid-atlantic guy did, did you uh, did you really yeah did, you really did. did no i did that's why i wore this shirt because oh, okay. i went to nwa 70 in nashville four years ago now and uh when uh nick aldis regained the belt from cody rhodes i right, was there right right that's another event my wife went to because okay. it was in nashville we did a little swap you know i'll do this you do that okay great right right, but, uh, right. you're right and, and i wish you know you and i are old school mm -hmm. uh and i i think the same way about that as you do you know tell you, you gotta tell a story tell you a just story. can't tell a story for uh, two weeks and then uh, you go to a pay-per-view and then it's over and then it, it, and you, you like, gotta what build happened? What happened to the state? Exactly. Built, exactly. Like you said, the Ten Bounds of Gold series with Tim Storm and Nick Nick Aldis. Yeah. They built. They built uh, it. Right, and, and it's a lost to me, a lost, a lost art. Well, well, Brian, did you? Um, so you you didn't attend Starcast. Starcast was back. Um, no, I didn't. It, it was Star it was in um it was in Nashville. It was in Nashville back in. It was yeah. Ric Flair's last match. Yeah. And I saw him. It was sometime go. in July, right? Yeah. And um, if you if you go back and look, I don't know if I posted on my I post a lot of stuff in my groups and on Twitter, but okay. uh, me and Maddie took a lot of pictures there, right? Okay, yeah. But, but um one reason I I went because I, I and don't get me wrong, I could care less really about Ric Flair's last match. It was mm -hmm. just the fact that okay, Ric Flair is having a last match, which if he win, lose, it, it doesn't really matter, right? Right. But the whole the whole thing where they built it up with him and Jay Lethal 
And then Jeff Jeff Jarrett, and I was like, whoa, this is this is good. Yeah, this is good. You know the whole press conference they had. Yes, when, yeah. When Rick Flair was making a mockery out of him. Him and his dad. I'm like, oh, this is good. Yeah. And then they went out to the parking lot, and first Jeff tried to help him. Rick's like, leave me alone. I'm like, who came up with this? This is good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Storytelling. Storytelling. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 really, a you know, I even went back, Reggie. I don't have cable out here. I live out in the sticks, but I have, you know, uh, Roku and stuff. So I get Hulu. Right. So I watch Raw a couple of days. Sometimes I just started watching. I just, I want to see, okay, maybe they've changed a little bit since Triple H took over. It has a little bit. Um, but it's still, to me, I mean, the NWA, you know, with Billy Corgan, how they're doing it right now with the studio, uh, like you said, the studio uh, setting, and like the old days, you know, it would Teddy Long was the referee in there, and, and right, uh, right, 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 uh, right. <laughs> Pee Wee, uh, what was it? Randy, Pee-wee? Randy, Randy, Randy Pee Wee Anderson, Pee Wee Anderson, yeah, Anderson. those guys, you know, and they had jobbers, aka enhanced talent, and, and half the tap the carpenters, the workers, exactly. the workers, you know, they come on every week. You knew who they were, the Mulkey and brothers, you, you know? the, the Mulkey, you 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 knew all of them, yeah. And even even now, when I see those guys um, at conventions, yeah, I want to get I want to get a picture with them because I'm yeah. like I'm like I you guys were great, yeah. You know, um, and and I don't know if you follow you talk about the Mulkeys. Yeah. I even I, I I was talking to Randy and oh, Bill. And I was like, man, I I love that match where y'all set them up with the gladiators. It was the gladiators <laughs> from from California, right? The gladiators of California, and they were already in the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup, right? Yeah. And the gladiators were coming in. They were gonna take on the Mulkeys, and the Mulkeys beat them on <laughs> national television. Right? I remember that. And I don't know if you remember who under the mask was George South and a guy named Gary Royal. They, okay. They, 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 um. You know, they, 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 who, that, that, that who, who was the team that was under it, right? Okay. And the Mokies won. And then they, they put them, uh, you know, they got them. And, and, you know, Tony, they brought them to the podium and they still didn't have nothing to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that wasn't them. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I can't, I can't believe we won. Oh, yeah. okay. The Mokies, they're going to the tournament. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I do. I remember that. Yeah. Mulkey Mania. Mulkey Mania. Yeah. If you ever listen to Jim Cornette, he he said he didn't want to start a Mulkey Mania. He said he yeah. didn't want to say that on television, but you're right. Mulkey Mania was Mulky running Mania. wild back in the 80s. That was some good stuff. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, it was. It was really good. So let me ask you this. I know you go to a lot of uh the conventions and, and mm-hmm. as much as you can. I go I go everywhere, Brian. Yeah. I'm everywhere. I'm I'm getting there. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> have you been to Waterloo? No, I haven't, but Maddie wants me to come. I, I honestly I never knew about Waterloo until this year. Yeah. And Maddie and he's like, oh man, next year you gotta go. Yep. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to squeeze it in next year. Yeah, me too. This, this will be my first one next year mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to. My first college poly alley club was this past one and it was great. I enjoyed it, I had a good time. Uh everybody's real personable and, and so what's been one of your favorite uh conventions that you've gone to? I know you've been to a lot. Yeah, but the, the um the one I started out with because around here, um not f- far from it, about an hour away, um they were in Spartanburg. Uh, they had a little promotion called Big Time Wrestling, mm-hmm. and they go from like North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. I think sometimes they go up north, but um they would have like not really conventions. They would have meet and greets, right? Okay, yeah. That's what I would start doing. But um, around here, and I never, I always wanted to go, but they had the, the NWA Legends Fan Fest. They have it every year in Charlotte, right? Mm-hmm. And it, um, every year I keep saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And I think it was maybe it was 2012 or 2013 was my first year going. And after I went there for four days, and after I did that, I'm going to tell you something, I was hooked. Yeah, I was hooked. And I... I went there every year and then they stopped it. A guy named Greg Price, he was promoted there, right? Mm-hmm. 2017, he stopped it, right? And it's like that summer came and I was I was thirsting for something, right? Yeah. I was like, I gotta find something to do. And um that year I went to uh place Winston Salem, North Carolina, a thing they have every year called Russell Cade. Yep. They have a Thanksgiving weekend, right? I went there and it was even bigger. Than the event in Charlotte, right? Yeah. But um, 
but it wasn't the same type of event. It was just, they had everybody, every old school wrestler, every everybody was there, right? It was mm -hmm. so big, but the setup wasn't as great, right? Yeah. But once I did that, that was 20, 2017 when I went to another event besides that one. But after that, I, um, I, I think I lost, I lost my mind. <laughs> I've, I've, um, I went as far up as I think New Jersey. I don't know if I've been to New York. Maybe I have been somewhere in New York. I know I've been to New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, and you know, we came down, I've been to Virginia. I've been to North Carolina. I've been to, uh, Tennessee. Oh, wow. uh, I've been to Georgia. I've been to Florida. And I'm trying to think, have I, I, I didn't go to the one in Dallas. I started to go to Russell County, Dallas, but yeah. uh, I couldn't fit that one in. Yeah. But, um, and and you talk about anything coming up, I'm um, two, I'm going back to Florida again. Uh, okay. A guy oh, by the name of Bar Barry, Barry Rose, Rose. Does, does, does the CWF. Yeah. And uh, I went in June and um, I'm going back, I'm going back uh, the first weekend in November. Oh, wow. And uh, I, Dory, Dory Funk, you know, he's going to be down there. They're doing Magnum TA. Okay. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of uh, who it was Magnum TA's partner in Florida, but I can't remember. Uh, he's a Florida here, which I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, I but, can't um, either, yeah. But, yeah, it, yeah um, it, it, it slips my mind. Yeah. But uh, that's who they're advertising. And okay. um, Gorg gorgeous Jimmy Garvin is going to be down there. But, yeah. and, and this this might sound crazy, right? But um, I'm not really going for the legends, right? Mm. You know who I'm going for? People like you. I love hanging out with, with people. Guys. Yeah, because yeah, in Charlotte every year, I, yeah. I go to Charlotte every year. A guy named Marty T. Mart. He start. He started. Yeah. He started over again in 2019. Yeah. And he calls it the gathering. Yeah. And when I say when I say it's the biggest family reunion, because yeah. we all we all hang out with the legends by day, but at night we're hanging out with each other. Yeah. And 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 you meet you meet so many friends, and then when you leave there, I go to Russell K. I see the same people. When I go to Florida, I see the same people. And not trying to brag, and you know you said it. Everywhere I go, somebody knows me. Yeah. People come up to me and like, hey, you're Reggie. I'm like, yeah, now who are you? <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> but everywhere I go, people know me. Yeah. And it's just because, you know, I start posting on most of my Twitter, social mm -hmm. media, and my belt group. And it, it's kind of flattering because um, I went to a play uh, event in Rome, Georgia. And I, when I say flat, this um, lady came up to me. She was like, oh, you're Reggie Hart. I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, you're a super fan. And she pulled me close. We, she took like five pictures. I can't believe I asked. I'm like, whoa. I feel like I felt like a star. You know what I'm saying? I felt like a star. I felt like yeah, a star. I, like I said, you're, you're pretty well known uh, in the, the fan community. Like I said, Maddie had told me a lot about you and some other people when we were at Cauliflower Alley Club. So, you know, I'm, you know, I've just started here in the last couple of years really uh starting to go to different places uh hopefully i want to get to iowa next year i'm gonna get to uh marty's the gathering i'm yeah. hoping the only thing with me is the good thing is my son he's stationed at fort bragg north carolina so i'm, I'm gonna try to plan it around there plan it go visit him a little bit and then maybe drive up to yeah uh, even Nashville. even if even even um even if you you know, um, don't go for the whole day. Try to try to do it a little bit. It's, yeah. it's I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's I've, great, man. I've heard nothing but great things about it, and uh, looking looking forward to it. And yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about Waterloo too, and I'm looking forward to that. And, and it's the first year I've heard about that, and I'm like, wow, where's this been? And everybody talked about because Maddie, of course, Maddie's a great promoter, and he yes. told me all about it. I was like, oh man, because he yeah. was telling me the people that was there mm -hmm. and what what. I like what he said is that when you go there, mm -hmm. it's not like, just like a, okay, you pay somebody 30 bucks, yeah. you um you you take a quick picture and you're on your way. He's like, right. no, you at, interact. And yeah. that's what's good about um the one in Florida. It's yeah. an intimate ses um, yeah. setting. So you just don't just take a picture and you right. actually can talk with the wrestlers and do whatever. I'll, um, I'll tell you a story. And, sure. and I was um, um, at the last fan fest down there Bill Eady and um, uh, Barry Doso. They was they would they would did demolition for the first hour, and then the second hour they did Mass Superstar and Crush the Crew Show, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, I, I went up to um, 
Bill Eady, and I was like, hey, um, you rem I remember meeting you in Charlotte. He was like, yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'm still taking that medicine that your wife gave me. I was like, oh, my wife didn't come. He had me confused with my friend, right? Oh, I, yeah. friend, I, was, I was like, hey, that's still good. He remembered, he re Licky remembered you, right? Yeah. But I'm sitting there, we and um, the, we were having dinner while Bill Eady and um, uh, Barry Dorso was talking. And, you know, Bill Eady said he had to go use the restroom. When he came by, he um, he patted me on the back, like, you know, like, hey, buddy. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like the mass superstar. Just patted me on the back <laughs> and just recognized, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. How, how, how cool is that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Now, Calif have you ever been to Cauliflower Alley Club? No. And I, I keep saying I'm going to go That's too. And I, I was talking to George Shire and I was like, I was like, yeah. I want to go, but I, yeah. I just haven't pushed the button yet. You yeah. know? It's great. It's the same type of event. It's very intimate. Know, yeah. Yeah. You go up. Like I talked to Lawler for probably I don't know ten minutes. Really? Yeah, he'll talk to you. He'll take a picture with you. Now, at these Russell kind of stuff, he charges like you know, a lot bucks. more money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at Cauliflower, it was I think twenty. Okay. And you can talk to him for forever. He signs whatever, and he'll talk to you. Same with JBL, John John Layfield. He was there. Right. Um, great guys. Uh, all the people that were there were really nice, were really, you know, intimate. Like they want to talk to you. They want to interact with you. It's just not sign and see you later. Take a picture right. and say, thanks for your time. Now, WrestleCon in Dallas was like that. Now, I talked to Sergeant Slaughter for a few minutes because in the evening more people were uh, doing other stuff. But uh, right. it's mostly like sign, take a picture, talk for like 30 seconds. Okay, thanks for your time and move on. And, and, and move on. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. that's the way most of the conventions are. Yeah. And I'm I'm... Most of I'm okay with that because that that's what it is, you know. Yeah, I mean, and they got lines, so you got to kind of make keep it moving, yeah. you know. And I and yeah. I get that, but but you know, it's only a few. Just like um, okay, Arn Anderson. I've met Arn Anderson like twelve times, right? But every time I go and see Arn Anderson, I'm meeting him over again because he doesn't remember right. me, right? But you get a person like Baby Doll. If I go up to her, she gives me a big hug. She's like Reggie. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Yeah. When, when, when they remember you, you know, yeah. I'm Facebook friends with us. Like, yeah. I love stuff like that. Yeah. And I see you've even had her on your show, right? I have, yeah, yeah. Sweet yeah. lady, sweet it's lady. Very, very sweet. Yeah, very, very sweet. sweet. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, and, and, it, and when you go to these places, she doesn't even charge a lot of money for. Right. Um, I think um, she's like, right, uh, an autograph might be 10 bucks, but the pitch is free. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so she's, she's great. That's, that's the nice, yeah. A lot of them are good, and sometimes it's the vendor that they're yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, like when I got this poster signed back here by Rick, uh, I want it personalized to me. And the guy's like, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? That means I can't really sell it if I ever – I wouldn't, but if I ever wanted to, I can't because it has my name on it. No, nope, right. no personalized. I was like, whatever. And Rick's like, sorry, man, I can't. I was like, okay, cool, whatever, just sign it. He signed it, and we took a couple pictures, you know, and moved on. But those belts in the back, I want to talk about those a little bit because you're the okay. you're, you're Mr. Six O Five belt collector. I'm, I'm right? a belt guy. Yeah, yep. belt guy, Mr. Six O Five belt guy. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, tell us about your first belt. That you okay. Got. Um, my first belt. Um, uh, let, let me give you a little backstory. I, I was sure. going to the conventions. Uh, up in Charlotte, and I, I seen um, Dave Milliken was there, the the the, uh, the Ace of Belts, right? All right. And he yeah. he would have all their belts out there. And if you go back to some of um, my photos, maybe about maybe nine, ten years ago, I'll be at his table just taking pictures, like, oh man, these belts. But Dave Milliken belts are so expensive, right? They're yes. very expensive. Yes. yes. And I was like, man, I can never afford any of his belts. Well. Um, Fast forward about three years after that, I met one of one of his handlers, right? One of the guys who was helping him. And um, he told me that um, his friend who helped him was selling a Dave Milliken belt. And I was like, how much? And um, I'm going to throw out numbers, but um, he said um, he's got a belt for sale for 1800 I was like, really? I was like, online, they're like 3000 I was like, so yeah. I talked to the guy and it was, um, it was October of 2016. Uh, and we had a, a hurricane coming through Columbia, right? Yeah. Um, it was Friday morning. Me and my 
that my wife and two daughters, we drove in the car and we drove to Memphis, Tennessee to meet this guy. We oh. got there and um, I bought the belt. And while we was there, we 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 like we been, we went to Martin Luther King where he got shot at, right? We went to Graceland. We, yeah. we was like, okay, I've never been to Memphis before. While we're here, we can enjoy it. But I drove there and got my first belt. It was um, and I, I won't I won't bring it off camera. It's right over here. It was you can my bring it uh, out if you want to, please. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, hold on. no problem. Bring it out. All right. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let's let's All see. All right. It. So this is my ah. first belt. The television uh, title. The television title. This is yes. one of my. Remember, I was telling you about our, um the uh, the one I saw back in 1986 with Telly yep. Blanchard. Yep. Telly Blanchard and Arn Arn Anderson was wearing this belt, right? Yep. And when I first, this is like one of my most favorite belts because when yep. when Dusty Rhodes Dusty Rhodes um was the first person to have this belt. Mm -hmm. He went from the old Mid Atlantic title to this one, right? Yeah. And I, it was something about this belt. On red leather, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah, I, I, I feel it. And so this was my first belt, and is it my favorite? I'm not gonna say, but it's one of them. Yeah, you know, and it's your but, first one. Yeah. So yeah. this belt was crafted by Dave Miller. Again, I say I paid by eighteen hundred for it, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay. Um, I, I thought I, I, I got Dave Miller's belt. I thought it was good. My second belt, and I don't know if you can see, do I. You probably can see it in the corner. It's okay. a big gold belt. Do you see the big yeah. gold? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I got that belt. It's signed by every everybody who I consider have having that belt, except for Dusty Rhodes, because he had already passed away, right? Yeah, when, yeah. when I say uh, everybody considered, I don't. When um when Rick went to the WWF and he yeah. took the big gold with him and came back, and then they they just renamed it the NWA title or the WCW. I don't count those. Yeah. So I have that belt signed by Ric Flair. I have that signed by Ronnie Garvin. Yeah. Ricky Steamboat. Yeah. And Sting, I think. I think okay. I think those are the um, those ones are the I four, have. Yeah. 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 Because right. I, I yeah because I don't think I mean the only person I don't have is Dusty, Dusty. Rose, right? Yeah. But um, I bought that belt from a company called Top Rope Belts, and it yeah, it was I'm here in the states, yeah. right? Yeah. And again, um, throwing out numbers, um, yeah. but I, I paid about sixteen hundred for that belt, right? And and Brian, I was like, damn, I can't do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I can't do this, right? Anyway, I, I started doing my research. And then um, it was this company called Classic Shields over in Pakistan. And yeah. they, they're still they're still the best yeah. foreign belt maker it is. I started buying belts from them, but instead of paying um thousands of dollars, I'm paying 300 oh, Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? 400 back then. They're, they're, they're really expensive now. That you got AWA your belt. Shield? You got AWA belt. Shield? Yep, I got it for uh, three hundred, and that really? was some classic, classic shields. Yep. Oh man, you got a good deal then. Yeah. Like they're, they're 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 really expensive now. You know what I'm saying? They're they're like American makers. Yeah. Like, I got introduced to classic shields and start buying their belt, and yeah. I got you know I got a, uh, my ten pounds of gold. I got uh, the national. Um, title that Telly Blanchard had. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, I, I got a couple other belts, but then after that, I start getting introduced to other makers yeah. and other makers and other makers. And I swear, um, I last, I got 70 or 80 belts later. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's where I'm at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I so mean, many, they call you the, the, the belt guy yeah, for if, a if reason. You, um, when, when I go places and um, if I'm, if I'm, and um, I, I'll send you a couple pictures. Like sure. when I, when I'm, I get two beds when I go to a hotel, and the other bed is nothing but the belts laid out. That's what it is. That's <laughs> I how love many, it. That's how that's how many belts I would take yeah, uh, to convention. And yeah. and as um as uh years go on, the the belts have gotten smaller and smaller because honestly, I've seen almost everybody. I wish there were some people back then that I wasn't collecting belts that no longer like Buddy Landell and the National. I wish I would I saw yeah. him, but I didn't have belts back then. And yeah. I got I got I, I I got a picture with Dusty Rose and a Dave Milliken belt, but I wasn't collecting belts back then. Yeah. I wish I would have started a little bit earlier, but then I, I probably couldn't afford them back then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So oh, you know yeah. it, it, everything works out for a reason. Yeah. But like I said, yeah. 70 belts later, I'm and it's to the point where I'm almost done. The only thing is now I um I, I get belts for some of my friends. I uh, like um, introduced them to a couple makers, and yeah. we were talking about Lex before we came on. Yeah, um, I had met Lex um, at 
one of these conventions, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, he follow we follow each other on Twitter. Yeah. And, you know, it's weird when I walk into a building, Lex Luger is screaming out my name, right? I'm like, man, you, I have arrived when Lex Luger is calling out my <laughs> name, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, I, I showed him. I was like, Lex, um, uh, this is the Southern Heavyweight replica of the Southern Heavyweight title. This was the first title you won back in like, like 1987 or something when you were in yeah. Florida. And um, and then he was like, oh, that's neat. And then he gave me a big shout out on Twitter. He came to Columbia, South Carolina at one of these little conventions that were here. And I showed him my United States title, you know, yeah. um, and Magnum TA was on the side. And I was like, um, I was like, Lex, this is the, the United States title that you had longer than anybody. I was like, Magnum introduced it. But they yeah. we in the belt game, we called us the Luger belt. And, and and Magnum was sitting right beside Magnum was like, give me a break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, he said, give me a break. But I was like, I was like, he's let Lex Luger, the longest reigning United States heavyweight champion of all time. Okay. He, he he held that belt longer than anybody from the from the NWA days up until even into WCW, right? Okay. Yeah. Had more range than anybody, right? Well, I showed Lex the belt, and Lex like, oh my goodness. Um where can I get one of these? I was like, if you want one, just let me know. Cause his his handler had a little belt, but it's almost like you said, it was like a little little brass, little. Yeah, little it was it, it it was garbage. I'm 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 not trying to be <laughs> mean, but it was garbage. Yeah. And so um, uh, me and Lex was following each other on Twitter, right? And I was just yeah. communicate. And then all of a sudden, um, Lex like, hey, give me a call. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, um, I, I called him and it went to voicemail, right? Yeah. And then the next day at work, I'm at work, right? And Lex Luger's name pops up on my phone. I'm like, I can't believe Lex Luger is calling me. You know, right? it's like, yeah, I, I'm I, like, I, you know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm still a fan at heart. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still a fan. But we went through the process. He told me what he wanted. And um, I ended up getting him a belt, and and he he he. Asked, I was like, look, Lex, I'll give I'll give you know gift it to you because I'm a fan. He was like, nah, we I'm I'm gonna pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and he and he paid me for my time also. You oh, know, wow. Uh, I, and I'm gonna be honest and not trying to um down anybody, but a lot of wrestlers have came to me and they wanted a belt, right? Yeah. But they didn't want they didn't want to pay for it. Yeah. They, you know, you know how you know um yeah. they felt like. Oh, you're a fan. You should just do this for me, right? Right. And, you know, if it's something with fifty bucks, but I'm not gonna. If something four hundred dollars, I'm not gonna just yeah give you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. No, I. You yeah. know. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I gave uh, I mailed Lex because I was gonna meet Lex somewhere because he was doing something close with Nikita, but I was like, nah, I can't drive up there. So ended up mailing it to him, and um, he gave me a nice little shout out on Twitter with oh. my name and everything. So I was awesome. like, oh man, that, exactly, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That they look. That, that's why I say I'm still a fan at yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still mark over stuff like that. Yeah. No, I, I would be in awe too if I was you. One more question, my friend. Uh, yeah. Up, uh, you know, what are you doing now? I, I, we talked a little bit earlier about it, but um, is there anything you're going to here in the next few weeks, or anything coming up before the yeah. new year? Uh, like I, like I said, like I said, um, in two weeks I'm gonna be um, November, November. I think it's the the fourth no or the yeah the uh actually it's a one day event but I'm gonna be in Florida from the that's fourth right. fifth okay. and sixth yeah uh that's the CWA uh CWF reunion um that Barry Rose is putting on yep. and like I said anybody is listening I don't know when this podcast is gonna come out but um that's a great event yeah if, if you're thinking about going or want to go it's it's a, it, it, Barry Barry does a great job mm -hmm. um. Um, at the end uh, end of November, I'm doing my annual Russell K. That's in Winston Salem, North Carolina, yep. and you can you can visit the website there. They got they have so many stars uh, there, yeah. uh, but only one one problem I'm having now is, and I think you say you still look at the product. I, I don't I haven't looked at the product since 2006. I, like I said, I'm I'm straight old school, and yeah. I tried to watch AEW, but. I, it, did, it didn't work for me. Yeah. Only thing I watched was the NWA when it came back a few years ago, right? Yeah. So when I go to Rasticate now, all these people are from a AEW, and um, I don't know who they are. Yeah. And that's how it is. Now I'm going to a lot of these conventions, yeah. and the, a lot of the legends are not there anymore. It's almost like, okay, if you wrestled in 2006 and you're a legend, I don't know who you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's hard to... 
I watch just kind of once in a while, just kind of keep up a little bit because when I do go to these events, they have those people there. And so I kind of know who they are. Right. right. Uh, but, you know, I'm like you. I mean, I just watch it kind of just to keep up a little bit. I don't watch it every week. I'll be honest. I don't. I probably watch it maybe once, maybe once a month just to keep up a little bit. Uh, Cause you know, like I, like we talked about earlier, Reggie, it's, it's a week or two of a storyline then it, and then it's something different. So when I watch it, I'm usually, okay, I'm caught up because it much hasn't really changed except this guy is wrestling somebody else now because the storyline blew from the last paper. Year, Which, so. Do you move around and watch, do you watch AEW, WWF or I NXT? Watch, you watch it all? I watch, uh, I watch a little bit of Raw uh, about once a month. Uh, Smack. No, I don't watch NXT. I I just not a fan of NXT. I never have been. Right. Uh, AEW periodically because they're not. They're just cable, and I don't have that. I just if I catch it on YouTube once in a while, I'll, I'll watch right. it. But but like I said, you know, um, we have a lot of similarities other than you're Mr. Belt guy, Mr. Six Hundred Five <laughs> Belt guy. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on here tonight, Reggie. I really really appreciate hey, it. It's it, 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 uh, been my pleasure. I, I was. When you reached out to me, I was I was flattered because, like I said, um, you sent me a link and I started looking at some of your former guests. I'm like, so and that you know I don't know if you remember the class. Like so, yeah. so why why do you want me? Why yeah, you, you know yeah, me? I remember the message. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm like you're so, a fan. So, yeah, so I was like, and that's what I told. I was like, you know, I'm just a fan. You know, yeah. I'm not. And you, you know, like, oh, people know you. I'm like, yeah, but not a whole lot. You know, not like that. Uh, you'd be surprised. So, but. I want to thank you again for coming on tonight. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, hope to meet you in person, either uh, Waterloo or, or somewhere in the near future. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll pass it uh, across, across somewhere. And um, can I can I give a, a, a plug for my Twitter account? Sure. Please. Yeah, uh, uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, is that at Reggie Hart? Twitter, I, I, po I post a lot of stuff on there, even when I go to conventions or mm -hmm. my little daily, daily posts for my belts. Um, I'm also on Instagram. And um, when, when you follow me on Facebook, that's more like my family stuff. I don't, I post yeah. some stuff, but it's not, yeah. you know, not a whole lot because uh, I'm going to tell you something, Brian, you know, we're peculiar people. Yeah. And, every, and everybody doesn't understand us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, oh, yeah. So it's a little I, different. I will post all your on my description below for the podcast. I'll put all your social media uh, all right. links and everything on there for you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reggie Harp, sir, thank I you for coming on tonight. Appreciate it. Bro. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Folks, if you're watching, thank you. If you are listening, thank you. And please subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.